All right, hello, welcome back. I am Jess Woods, your Tempo host for Marathon Week here in Chicago, and I'm very excited to finally talk to not a Chicago native, but local to Chicago now for the last six years. We have Courtney Phillips here with us today. Thank you very much for taking time out of a crazy Marathon Week to come and talk to Tempo. Thanks for having me, it's great to be here. Yeah. Uh, so just a, a quick bio about yourself for anyone not familiar with Courtney. Uh, you are the co-founder of Gumbo Media and then the co-founder of Gumbo Fit, which is a local grassroots uh, fitness community powered by Nike Running uh, with a goal of creating space for black representation in running. Yeah. 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 I love the succinct uh motto and like mantra and what you guys are all about thank you yeah i mean we we recently came uh, up across a slogan that we're kind of running with this year that's um community over everything yes and um and 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 i i just like i feel like that really is what we do and then yeah again we're creating space and sport and running is our primary pillar so and, I, and I'm addicted to it, so I was like, <laughs> you know, if you meet me, you're, like, I'll try to get you to run at least a mile. I love that. Mm -hmm. And Tempo last spoke to you back in 2019, mm -hmm. and your fitness community, your running community, has just massively exploded since then, I think. Like, you guys have um, 25 folks training for the Chicago Marathon this time around. Mm -hmm. Like, how have you managed this like explosion and boom uh in in the running scene yeah i mean so because we're sponsored powered by nike running like we're really fortunate to have the opportunity to um be provided like bibs for the marathon and share them with our community and this year we were able to um really create an entire cohort where individuals across our city apply to be a part of it and like there's only 25 spots and we weren't really sure how many people would apply but we got about a hundred applicants and so it's like oh, we're wow. like okay so there is interest for this and um and so then because of that we were also able to not just like provide the cohort an opportunity but then we gave out an additional 10 bibs to the broader community so then it's like that is so in total i would say it's about like 35 people that we've kind of been facilitating yeah with 25 of them being a very hyper focused cohort group that we've like really created a well-rounded training um season for so that includes track tuesdays um strength trainings on wednesdays long runs on saturdays and then like you know obviously they got the the nike gear oh um, nice yeah and then different just like activations we um we ended it with a marathon pregame um just last sunday so it's tell just... us about a marathon pregame well because <laughs> this <laughs> This sounds very, what are you like chugging like Gatorade or what is what is a marathon pregame? Well, so it was an idea that I initially had um, kind of at the beginning of the season just to, just because I was just mulling over. OK, like I love curating activations um, and obviously I love bringing community together. I feel like it's something that I do well. And so I'm like, OK, how how can I kind of put the cherry on top of everything? And so I was just telling people other leaders in the community about this idea that I had to do a marathon pregame where we would allow for like recovery um, and then do panel discussions, um, special guests, and then also do like a mini expo where we would bring in um, different businesses that kind of fit well within the, the athlete's lifestyle. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so then we, I have a partnership, Gumbo Fit has a partnership with Edge Athlete Lounge, which shout out to them. Yes. It's ran by Coach Robin, who's a Nike running coach, and she's also my mentor. She's my personal coach right now. And um, we've partnered over 2020 at first to just put on races mm -hmm. to encourage people to continue to lace up and train um, over the pandemic. And we, were, we put on like a half the day that the Chicago half would have been, but we pushed it out into the forest preserve. And then we did the same for the marathon last year, which is wild to think about because now we're here and the marathon's actually happening. So we're really grateful for that. Yes. Um, so we were just trying to fill gaps. And so for this, we were like, let's pivot and do not a race, but a celebration of the season 
and Edge Athlete Lounge already has like a hot tub, a cold pool. Yes, the boots. I, I love Edge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so right. I didn't make my appointment yet for this week, you have but to. yes. <laughs> Who knows if you'll get in at this point? Cause, I know. I mean, it's just so packed, but like. Robin, if you're listening. Right. Yeah. And so we have, yeah, I'm sure you'll get in easy, but um, <laughs> <laughs> the. Um, and so that she has, they have a great facility and it has like a really beautiful garage space. And then like we had that connection and then we did, uh, I had tons of brands, which was really great. But then the panels included like, you know, talking to the cohort, like a couple of the cohort individuals and asking them what was their experience like, you know, and like, how, like, how are you feeling about the marathon? And then we had um, coaches come out, including Coach Robin talking about, okay, well, what's next? Because, you know, um, post-marathon blues is a thing that I don't think oh, we yes. talk about enough. Even just post-race blues, just like you have it's this real. purpose in, in your runs and what brings you out outside and to lace up. And then all of a sudden it just kind of ends after that day. Um, and so it's like, how do we talk about it ahead of time and get ahead of it? So then um, there's that. We also had a, um, a, a sports psychologist talking also about visualization. Also extremely important. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I know that this list is getting long, but like even the, sh the executive director of the Chicago Marathon came out as a special guest oh, um, wow. and spoke to our athletes, um, which was the second time that he actually spoke to our athletes because he also came out to our track Tuesday, so that says a lot. Um, and then we had elite athletes, including Sarah Hall, zoom in, um, and... Um, uh, I'm, <laughs> we had two others, but yeah. it was just like I could go on and on about it. It was really... A, a great time and I and it's something that I want to continue doing because I think that we need to support our, our runners in the city that they are living in um, especially when it comes to like marathons it, it, like this Chicago Marathon brings 40 it's like 45,000 runners right and like a large chunk of them live in Chicago but then how like how are we actually catering our um, to those runners specifically because they're the heartbeat of, of the running community here, right? Yeah, it sounds like mm -hmm. you really gave your group a 360 approach to marathon training, not just the workouts, the long runs. It, you are definitely the queen of activations and just like <laughs> elevating this experience for your cohort training for Chicago. That Thank sounds you. amazing. Yeah. How did you choose these 25? How did you dwindle it from 100 down to 25 like just tell me about the makeup of these 25 runners is it mostly beginner mm -hmm. runners is it a, a wide range of ability levels yeah so it's over 50 percent is our first time marathoners um um all uh black and brown we um and then we have uh, i believe over 50 percent are women and then um and then i we also were really intentional about including runners who um, were everything from Gen Z to like millennial and a little bit older, um, just to kind of like create mentorship within that. Cause some, some of the, d depending on the age didn't really matter as far as like whether or not they're a first time marathoner, but I'll just say that like a few of the marathon, few to, few of the cohort individuals have ran like four marathons, but yeah. they have not never been a part of like a community, like we were putting together and because they had already ran marathons and and were also very much eager to be a part of the community they were able to mentor the new younger um like individuals so it just kind of was an intention behind of like how are they going to interact how can they learn from one another how can we make sure that there's like a well-represented group of individuals where at the end of this because of them just simply being who they are they will automatically inspire their their own communities to also run and show up oh and i think that goes back to what you were talking about of what do we do after yeah. the marathon is done you know the saying of there is no finish line like how do we take this amazing experience that all of your runners are having right now and then continue it after mm -hmm. race day and it sounds like you're having them you know take it back to their communities and yeah yeah, I really honestly, and I, I'm a really big supporter of like, I think if you are inspired to start your own run club, please do. Like, even with, when people approach Gumbo Fit, I'll be like, yeah, we are a run club in Chicago, but we're not the only run club here. And I really do believe about, like, believe everyone should find their tribe mm -hmm. within the sport because everyone carries a different personality and like every group 
is, is just like that. So um, I, I always say like, and if, if you haven't found one that fits you, then create your own. If you're motivated to do it, just make sure that you show up because consistency is key. Because <laughs> <Sure. laughs> um, it's definitely a commitment, but like, I, I just want, I, running changes your, will change your life. You know, we had at our last track Tuesday of our whole training season um, on our board with the workout say, I dare you to try, I dare you to train and run a marathon and not have it change your life. And, and it's like, that's what we're doing. Um, it's it's a, like running in and itself is, is a social movement, just like pretending to just be running, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's so much more. It is. And uh, I mean, it kind of sounds like a hyperbole or dramatic that it's going to change your life, but I love that. I mm -hmm. dare you to, yeah, I mean, <laughs> to like let it gonna, not change your life. Yeah, you're going to come out the other end a different person. Yeah, mm -hmm. God willing. Mm -hmm. um, so your major focus this year, major slogan is community over everything, um, which I think is great. But what are like some tangible, actionable things that you're doing in order to foster community? Yeah. Like, how are you making it welcoming for everybody? Yeah, I would say we've always been um, encouraging of people to come at whatever level they're at. Um, we adjust workouts depending on um, people's athleticism. Um, I really encourage people to come out like on track Tuesday sometimes first because then we can kind of see where they're at on a track versus just saying, okay, it's out and back. Um, on the lakefront or through the neighborhoods. It's just like you're able to kind of keep an eye on folks a little bit more and then kind of continue to say like, okay, well, what, what would next week look like in the following? And then get them up to kind of like where they want to be. Obviously everyone has their own goals. Mm -hmm. And then also like when we do have our long runs on Saturdays, we always have like a sweeper so that people don't feel alone at the, in um, as far as like where, if they're at the back of the pack. Um, I, and so that's that's been really important for us. And then also just like making sure that we ask people how they're feeling. I think that some of the feedback that we got, well, I know the feedback that we've gotten um, as far as like a lot of newcomers, um, once they get comfortable with us, they'll just say, okay, well, I, at one, either I've never joined a run club and thank you for being welcoming, but then also, or I've visited other run clubs and, you know, maybe it was very, they felt a little bit more transactional where it's like you come out, you run, you leave. Yeah. Um, and that works for some people and that's totally fine. But I think for us, it's just a little, it's more relaxed. Um, we have our purpose, we have our schedule, like it's a scheduled time and a, and a, and a whole uh, workout. But at the end of the day, it's like, I want to make sure we check in with you. And make sure also, everybody knows each other's yeah, name. And it's We're like, cheering the last new? runner in. Like, right. Like, it's like we have to, because at the end of the day, it's like that's also a cultural thing. It's like we, it, it's, it's just how we are. It's not really like something that we have to like really try hard to do. Um, it's just within the framework of our leadership. Mm -hmm. and, and that too is that like, I'm, although yes, I, and the director of it and main and main like person kind of like steering this ship behind the scenes. Um, I have a, a leadership of coaches of, of like five people. Right. So like and they all come from different running backgrounds and um, we have a mother. We have like a super fast runner. We yeah. have a, like a serial marathoner. It's like the spectrums like across the board. And so from that, I'm able to also use what their backgrounds to kind of see what is needed and then fit our programming to, oh. um, to just like to the best to suit our community in the best way it sounds like you've surrounded yourself with some really great people so that you mm -hmm. can cater to all that's awesome yeah i mean it takes a team because yeah. if i did it by myself it wouldn't be as as good as i can only do so much <laughs> but but yeah. going back what inspired you to even start gumbo fit in the first place were you always a runner mm -hmm. like when did you consider yourself uh i know people always have like this misconception of i'm not a real runner but like mm -hmm. what was what's your background like what what inspired you to even start gumbo fit in the first place i started gumbo fit kind of on a just a like with a passion for fitness wanting to find a sport that I could take into my older age like and I'm not even old right obviously but like I just I'm always forward thinking and I'm thinking like okay if I want to maintain my fitness mental and physical health right how can I do that but like 
you know, but so like what sport do I need to play? <laughs> I did play sports in high school, but I did not run. I wasn't really a runner, never considered myself a runner maybe until like last year. Like even oh, wow. after I ran my first marathon, I was like, am I a runner? I guess I'm a runner. Like it took me a while <laughs> to like claim it. I love that people don't think they're a runner until they run a marathon. Yeah. It's so wild. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, and so I like, I started off with, I gave myself a challenge of running like a mile for a month. And then uh, I, just because of my work within Gummo Media um, and just like even with our um, connections with Nike, like I, I just kind of shared with them. I was like, I really want to run a marathon. And I was like, I know I can, I can do it with a community. Um, and, and, and so I just started inviting people out and we played with the name Gumbo Fit because gumbo media was first and we're like mm -hmm. oh it could be our fitness initiative it's called it gumbo fit and like every at first people were like interesting and then it just <laughs> stuck and so now it is what it is um but that is like kind of the story behind it and like gumbo itself the reason for gumbo media is that like gumbo is, is to us is just like what blackness is it's everything it's the rules come in different hues the flavors depend on how you make it it's just very much it's a melting pot within the broader melting pot and so it's gumbo it's gumbo fit um and that's and so it just again it's stuck and that's we're, we're rolling with it and so in the beginning it was like the focus for me selfishly was like i want to get i want to run a marathon and i want to hold myself accountable and i know that community will help me do that. And I also know that I know how to gather community. Like that's just something that I have been doing for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I, cause, and I love doing it. So let me just put the two things together. Right. And um, through that, I found my now like leadership team. So that was our first year in 2019 and we ran the marathon and that was really great. And then since then it's just grown and it's been such a short amount of time. Um, but that's kind of it. And then it's like, and then from that point on, it's like, okay, but now we have this huge community and we've continued to find new ways to, to serve them and we're enjoying it now. Like I want other people to feel what it feels like to, to run a marathon, to even this is a training for a marathon. The marathon's fantastic, but like the training, <laughs> yes, like the, with the bond that you, you feel with your like, running partners is just unmatched like it's just a, a sweat bond like no other and so it's like that's what I wanted people to experience like you can run tons of marathons but they're never going to forget this training season it exactly was just like one of one um race day itself is just a moment in time yeah and it's great it's great yes. I mean um so I guess I mean I to, I guess to answer your question is just like the motivation is very much to like I think at the core, beyond everything else, is to get people outside into fresh air, into nature, and to also, like, <laughs> allow people to experience something new. Because even if running gets you into something else, like, at least, like, it, we, were, we helped you get there. That and, makes sense. Yeah. yeah, and especially the black and brown community. Oh, yeah. Right, because, mm -hmm. I mean, what we haven't talked about is, like, running and especially mm -hmm. endurance sports being a predominantly and historically space taken up by white people. And so I think that, uh, and this is not even a question, this is more of a praise to you of, of what you're doing in this space because um, I feel like sometimes the problem statement feels so huge and like you're boiling the ocean and we don't really know where to start with uh, getting more runners of color involved mm -hmm. in the community that we just don't even begin and because you're like oh I'm just going to be a drop in the bucket but you are being a drop in the bucket because enough drops in the bucket are going to fill the bucket mm -hmm. and so I just love this is just a praise that I love what you're doing and setting an example and hopefully for future generations and young runners to then you know, be inspired to be in these leadership positions in yeah. the running space. Yeah, I guess that's something that I, like, I guess in the moment when you ask me, I sometimes forget to just very, be very specific about that because the way I see it and the way that even within Gumbo Media, we see it as just like me showing up, I'm automatically going, going to attract black and brown people. Like it's what I do is catered to the black and brown community because what I do is of the black and brown community. So therefore it's like, like, like. Exactly. And so it doesn't, so it's not, again, it's not like an overly kind of like 
it's not a reach. It's natural. And it's like, I didn't intend, it's like, yeah, it's natural. So it's like when, I, when, when we put the call out to say, hey, do you guys want to come out and run? That's what our community is. So it's not, it's just all within the framework. So everything that I'm talking about, that is part of it. And you can't escape it because I'm a black woman. So no matter what, I'm going to reflect black women. Um, and, but at the same time, I have to make sure that the variety of blackness is represented. So that's why like my leadership team is also diverse. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it's about going beyond that and understanding that like I reflect a, like a certain number, but then let's make sure that we get other representations. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's, it's, it's always there because I can't escape it. It's my life. Yeah. And are there, what challenges or have there been any challenges that you specifically have experienced uh, being a black female runner? Like, are there any opportunities that you were given or not given? I mean, I don't know. It's kind of like I, I, I'm so new to the running world that I don't even know what the opportunities are really. I feel like I'm creating my own opportunities, but that's also what I've been doing forever. Like I, I, I've been, I was a professional model for eight years and I came to Chicago and I was like a Ford model and it was great. But then I also realized that I wanted more, per like I, not more purpose because a lot of people find a lot of purpose in that career, but I was just shifting, finding my interest shift. And so like, so me being in the running world now, it, every step of the way is like, oh, this is new. Oh, that's fun. Oh, look at this. Like, oh, what if we did this? That's why like the pregame, it's like, I don't think everyone kept telling me, oh, no one's done this before. Like, oh, this is so cool. But then for me, I'm just like, because I just got here and I don't know what we're supposed to be doing. So <laughs> I just make stuff up as I go and, and create my own opportunities. But then again, it's like as a black person, sometimes that's what we have to do anyways. We have to just create our own opportunities. And so I'm just, I like, it's a career mindset. It's just like what life has taught me. And so I'm not even really trying to compare myself to anyone because my career in the running world is so different from everybody. So like, I don't know what it's, it's supposed to look like or what I have been missing out on because I don't feel like I've missed out on anything. Oh, I, I think that's definitely the <laughs> quote of the interview of creating your own opportunities and mm -hmm. doing things that have never been done before and creating these amazing journeys for your runners leading up to the marathon and giving them these experiences that they might not have experienced otherwise. And uh, I know you said that it's all about the journey, mm -hmm. more importantly than race day itself, but we still have to talk about race day itself. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got to talk. It. Yes, we need <laughs> to hear about the Chicago Marathon specifically. What can we expect along mm -hmm. the court? Like, give us some insider information. I know we hear things like the GPS is notoriously yeah. off on the Chicago Marathon course. Like, what, what else can we expect on Sunday? Well, I, I, I feel like this year's a new, it's a very special year, obviously. I like, I keep telling my runners, like, enjoy it. I'm encouraging them not to wear headphones. Yes. I, cause I mean, like I didn't wear any headphones my first marathon and I just enjoyed every moment, um, and just soaked it in. So I just feel like that's one thing I just want to like say loud, <laughs> loudly to everyone, like just really enjoy the moment. And then I feel like what to expect is just like expect it to be kind of kind of crazy in some ways it's like they're very it's like the marathon they're so organized but at the same time there's people everywhere and it's like just expect to wait for the bathroom because uh, there's never enough porta potties and like you know and like expect to run more than 26.2 miles because that is what happens yes. <laughs> like you're probably going to run 27 um and like and put your name on your chest so we can call you out and and you know we'll be at 35th in indiana I was going to ask where you're going to be cheering. Um, is that where your whole team is going to be? Is that your cheer zone? Yeah, us and then a couple other run clubs in, uh, uh, that are uh, based on the south side. So we're, we're going to be over there. Um, yeah, I mean, I just don't even know. Like, this year is so new, too. I think that there's a lot of things that I don't even know what to expect. But I just hope everyone just can, can like, kind of just, like, take what they need from it more than anything. Um, we've been prepping our runners for, for a very long time. We do check-ins and Zoom calls and all that, and they're all asking all the sorts of questions, like, should I bring a bag? Should I not bring a bag? And I'm just like, maybe not, because bag check can kind of, you know, that can slow you down, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, maybe you shouldn't do that, but 
who knows? I mean, it's also going to be warmer this year. So it's like maybe expect to like, you might have to switch up what you plan, you're planning on wearing, right? The high is yeah. like almost like 79 or something right now. Yeah, it keeps getting worse and worse every time yeah. we check it. Yeah, so, so maybe we should stop checking it. Right, I just, I check it every now and then. Right? <laughs> I was like, well, you know, and I, and that's another part too, is just like maybe if for those, of, for our runners who it's their first marathon, it's like maybe the expectation should just be to cross the finish line or like that's, you know, like yeah. just, the just expectation finish. is to have no expectations just, on Sunday. Yeah, show up and do you. Yeah. That's really it. Just, be, just do you. And you ran it once in mm -hmm. 2019. That was your first marathon. And mm -hmm. is that your only marathon so far? Yeah. And mm -hmm. you originally said that your next goal would then to be to eventually qualify for Boston. But I feel like... Who told the, you that? I heard it Who's on an interview. You? you said that oh, once upon okay. a time. Yeah, I mean, no, it's not a lie. I'm just wondering, like, if people are talking about it's it. It's recorded. It's out there it somewhere because yeah. I heard it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a slow runner right now. Like, I'm just currently training for a 50K. Yes, I was going to say, I feel like your goals speed. have pivoted a yeah, little bit. That, the speed has gone down. And I'm like, <laughs> it's cool, I guess. Because I'm, I'm really enjoying trail running. Yeah. And I, it's just like... You're the, speaking my language now. Right. And, like, my... I think that trail running has exposed me to just just like kind of how easy we have it as Chicago runners because everything is so flat and so now like I'm training for a race that's in Arizona in December and it's like also oh, like runners that have elevation regularly like they're just different and like <laughs> I have to seek it out like I have to go out of the city I have to just go far out and then then it's just the whole thing but um I think yes eventually Boston I just want to do it because I, I like I have to do it before I'm 35. Like I have to. I'm 30 now. So like Okay. I'm like I need I need to do. It. I feel so like we have I a 5-year plan. Yeah, and I think coach Rob, I feel like shout out coach Robin. I feel like she could take me there. Yes, um, of course. So, She's amazing. Yeah, I'm like I want to do that, but I and then I just realized that I want to do all six major marathons like in my lifetime because I yeah. know that that's just something you'd kind of just have to throw up to chance kind of with the drawing and all that stuff. Right. So I just realized like because I, I, I don't know why I'm late to things. Again, I'm new to the running world, so I, I like just found like I just discovered the London Marathon, like, like the beauty of it, and I was like, oh, I need to, I need to go to, I need to go to London, and obviously Berlin, but like all of them. Yeah. So isn't it so amazing, feel, like being new to a sport though? It's kind of humbling at 30 to be like, well, now I'm doing something new, but it's yeah. amazing to like, it's kind of like ignorance is bliss right now. Yeah. We're just kind of experiencing everything. The way my entire life is now consumed by running, it, I would have never expected that had you asked me two years ago. I mean, mm -hmm. like everything in my bio is about running. Like I have a running podcast. <laughs> yes. I run all the time. Like I just, and my friends are just like, you really like running. I'm like, yeah. It's like, I've literally, I'm at a place now where like my career is running and it still doesn't, it's like, doesn't make sense to most people around me. <laughs> the career, yeah. It's so, your passion has become your career now. It's very it's strange. Awesome. Um, okay. So just let's talk about trail just for a little bit oh, longer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just one more question about mm -hmm. trail. Where are you finding trail in mm -hmm. Chicago? And are you thinking about expanding gumbo fit taking mm -hmm. them to the trails and like getting out of city running and and showing your runners what else is available oh for sure like for sure um to answer your first question this morning i went out to swallow cliff um and they have like these like these very steep stairs and that's like a lot of people just go out there and just do the stairs um so that that's a really great place to go if you're new um, because you can do the stairs and then you can jet out into the path and then there's like a like a like a seven mile loop and then it's like Palos it's a forest preserve and I think it's called the Palos like forest preserve so you can find anything between like three mile loop to obviously you can go out and back but then like a couple weeks ago I did like a nine mile loop um, it, and so it's like you can find you can find it and so mm -hmm. like and the elevation that you can gain. Um, is pr it's pretty decent. Like I think today, my Garmin or excuse me, my watch said that I <laughs> I did uh, about like a like fifteen hundred uh, um, foot elevation altogether. So like that. I mean, it's just like it's decent. You can get there. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I think that it's just like there's you just kind of have to go out of the city. 
Um, trail running within Gumbo Fit for sure. Branching out into that is like my goal for 2022. Um, because again, like I, I kind of alluded to earlier, earlier is that like, for me, it's like, it's about running, but then once you start running, you realize that it's about like, at least for me, it's, it's like, you see the difference of what happens when people are just outside in nature and it just like makes you a happier person. Oh yeah. And it changes your life moving. It changes the rest of your day. Like yeah. it's like, and how does that affect the people that you're around? And then how does that create a ripple effect? And that's kind of what I'm thinking about is just like the healing of nature and just getting folks out into into it. Yeah, I swear my runners look like different people. When you take them out of the city environment yeah. and like into the woods and in nature, mm -hmm. it's just totally different people. I love experiencing that and watching that and sharing that with others. So mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe we can do a little, Please. you Whatever come to New York, to I'll show you the New York <laughs> trails. And then I've been to yeah. Chicago six times and I've never, at least six times, and I've never seen the trails in Chicago. So we'll just do a little. So we can do that. And then there's also trails in the city that a lot of people don't know about. So like um, I've been in conversation with like the Chicago Park District just okay. to kind of like get to know the trail system in the city that like because you'll run you'll run down lakeshore and yeah. then you'll run right past like these beautiful prairies that are there and with like rolling hills that are have wood chips on them and it's like we should make oh that use sounds of them. glorious like, it's yeah it's really beautiful and it's right there and so it's like if you can't get out of the city how can we still do it but get onto trail but within the city limit awesome yeah okay well We'll be sure to follow along and don't be surprised if uh, some <laughs> New York trail runners show up to your, your first trail event here in Chicago. Amazing. All right, so wrapping it up here, now that you're a coach, mm -hmm. congratulations oh, thank on the you. RRCA certification, thank right? You. you know, yeah. I'm coming into the title. You yes. Know, again, I'm like, I like to warm up to it. I'm here. <laughs> you are here <laughs> now. And so as a coach, mm -hmm. what is like your number one a uh, piece of advice to give to our racers on Sunday, um, like just coach to coach here, what would you, what would you tell our runners on Sunday? Let's end with a last bit of advice. I'll say run your own race. You know, we all like to ghost race. We all do it and mm -hmm. it's okay and you're gonna do it and all that adrenaline is gonna get you pumping and you might come out hot, but just remember at some point when you start getting into your mind again that it's about you and your own race and um i'm always i'm always reminding our runners pace yourself i like pace it. yourself yes mm -hmm. great last advice to end on mm -hmm. thank you so much again for taking time out of marathon week and we will be sure to look out for you where is it mile 23 23 yeah. all right we will look out for you guys at the cheer zone on mile 23 and we'll put like all the links out there of where to follow your run club in future endeavors. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah.